Equilibrium is the condition where products and reactants freely interchange. The free energy difference between the products and the reactants is zero, so there's no energy penalty to switch back and forth, and they do so freely. Now, at equilibrium, the products or the reactants may be favored. If the products are favored, that implies a standard state free energy difference that's less than zero, a negative standard state free energy, and an equilibrium constant that's greater than one. So those two things are correlated. The standard state free energy is the free energy difference between all the products and reactants at one atmosphere, if they're gases, one molar, if they're a concentration, or a pure solid or pure liquid. So if I looked at this in the standard state, I'd have one molar D and C, one molar A and B, and the free energy difference between those would be the standard free energy difference. Now that's not the equilibrium situation. Obviously if I have one molar of everything, that's an arbitrary standard condition that I've chosen. But if the standard state free energy difference is negative, less than zero, that indicates that at equilibrium, the products will be favored. If the standard free energy difference is greater than zero, it's positive, then at equilibrium, the reactants will be favored. K greater than one indicates products will be favored. K less than one indicates reactants will be favored. So there's a correlation between the magnitude of K and the magnitude of delta G standard. In fact, you can say for standard state free energies negative, less than zero, that's a spontaneous reaction. We say it favors products. That's also true for K greater than one. Products over reactants, if the product is larger than reactants, then that's greater than one in the ratio, and that's a K greater than one. Products are favored. So if both of these favor products, spontaneous is the label we give them. Now notice that that label spontaneous means products are favored at equilibrium. It doesn't have anything to do with the rate of the reaction or how fast we get there. It just means that once we get to equilibrium, the products are favored. The the uh, other situation where delta G standard is positive, that says if you have one molar and one atmosphere of everything, I tend to go back towards reactants to get to equilibrium, then reactants are favored at equilibrium and K is less than one. Those are called not spontaneous reactions or non-spontaneous. Now, just because a reaction is non-spontaneous does not mean it doesn't form any products. It doesn't mean the reaction doesn't go it just means when I get to equilibrium, it's the reactants that are favored. There will be some products, but the reactants are favored. They're in higher concentrations or pressures in general. If the standard free energy difference is zero, then that would be a strange situation. That would say if everything is one molar and one atmosphere, that the, the, act, the reaction's at equilibrium. And of course, K would be equal to one because you would put in one for every pressure or every concentration and you'd get a K equal to one. So if it were the case where, say these were all gases and A, B, C, and D were all one atmosphere pressure and that turned out to be the equilibrium situation, then K would be one and the free energy difference between the products and the reactants would be zero because the equilibrium situation means the pressures don't change from those pressures, they stay at one. Standard free energy zero, K equal one. Not a common situation, but mathematically it's one we can think about. So in general, we have a relationship between delta G and K that we have now intuitive. K is less than one, delta G greater than zero. K is greater than one, delta G less than zero. So that behaves like a natural log function. Here, if you take the natural log of k, and you go to k is greater than 1, that's positive. Put a negative sign in front of that, that would give you negative delta g's. So k is greater than 1 give you negative delta g's for this natural log function. And when you go to a fraction less than 1, the natural log function becomes negative. 
Multiply that times a negative and you get a positive sign. So that accounts for this relationship. A k less than 1, a fraction, gives you a negative natural log, and a positive delta g. So this relationship, delta g standard is minus r, the gas constant, t, the temperature, natural log of k, is the relationship that we intuitively kind of understood from the magnitudes of these. It's the mathematical relationship between delta g standard and k. Of course, you could also solve for k. k is exponential delta g standard minus over rt. So these two relationships allow us to switch between free energies and equilibrium constants analytically. That is, we could look up standard state free energies, calculate the standard state free energy difference for a reaction, and calculate the value of k. So you can see the power of the thermodynamics as they relate to each other Tables of standard state free energies give you equilibrium constants and tell you how a reaction is favored at equilibrium, products or reactants. That's the nature of the relationship between the standard state free energy and the equilibrium constant, K.